Install those safety guards after our actors fell off the set one too many times. Granted, they kept falling off even with the rails, but thanks to how the contract was laid out, we were no longer liable for their injuries. Gentlemen, I guess it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Why on earth does this crazy film have title cards on screen when people are talking? You're thinking that, aren't you? I know you are. I would be too. Well, we had thought about making it a silent film at one point, so we shot a lot of scenes up close like this with the dialogue written out for the audience to read. Well, when we swapped over to making a talkie, well, we just decided to keep on going rather than reshooting all those scenes. about being in showbiz. Craft services. It's like never-ending supply of free food all day long. I never had to pay for a single meal. Hey, Patrick, I notice you guys don't do that here in your studio. You should talk to your boss. Maybe even just a bagel station. <laughs> science community also complained about these Terra whatevers breathing fire. Like there's fossil evidence of dinosaurs not ever shooting fireballs. It's not like I gave them neck frills or had them spit poison or anything ridiculous like that.
As luck would have it, the next lot to ours was filming some horror movie set in Transylvania. So we signed a soft contract with them to use their set after they wrapped for the day. And by that, I mean we kind of snuck in and filmed it real quick when no one was looking. <laughs> I had my assistant Phyllis keep a lookout for the security guard. this scene with Scarlet using the landmines, but then I came to my senses and we reshot with Dick. I mean, a woman using high explosives? <laughs> this may be a science fiction, but we have to keep things at least somewhat believable. Most days, the effects team really nailed it. Dinosaurs, saucers, hey, you name it. But these, um, deflating rock boulder cubes, ah, not their best work. Just looks kind of odd, if you ask me, like giant whoopee cushions. And they said they could add some debris and explosions or two afterwards. And then we ran out of budget. Well, to be fair, we ran out of budget several times, but still, I lost a lot of sleep over these rocks. adrenaline boost to get our hero to really start wailing on those monsters. We were unsure how to represent a surge of adrenaline at first, but I think we nailed it. Yep, definitely nailed it.
tried this one with regular logs. Well, that was disastrous. I'll tell you, never mess with physics. It was kind of, well, to be frank, it started out nice, but then, uh, well, it was a death trap. Just plain and simple, it was a death trap. Poor kid holding the boom almost broke his leg. Guess he played basketball in college or something, because he leaped right at the last second. Woo! Crisis averted. My props guy wanted to swap them with some spongy material for safety, but I had a better idea. Let's set the logs on fire. Then the crew will be sure to be safe dealing with them. this jumping and climbing and jumping wouldn't this make a great video game isn't that what all those video games are about jumping around well yeah and killing there's jumping too but mostly the killing what patrick that's awful what sort of example are we setting for our use well movies are pretty violent too your heroes have killed everything in sight. You had Dick shooting a dinosaur in the face in the first five minutes. Uh, well, Patrick, that's different, you know? What we did on film, that was art. Video games aren't art. Funny story about the two caged apes in this scene. I had completely forgotten about them when we wrapped up filming on the set. Then we spent the next day doing a location shoot. So suffice it to say, our return to the studio was met with a couple of grumbling tummies complaining about unsafe work conditions, human rights, yada, yada, yada. Hey, Patrick, I was thinking we should take a little break and get a bite to eat. You like Chinese? I know a great takeout. Well, we're not scheduled for a break for another few hours. Nonsense. Hey, you have to try the shrimp. It's the absolute best. But, oh, hey, uh, I feel like I should warn you. It gives me horrible gas. <laughs> but that's okay. We're friends, right? Oh, really, sir? Studio time costs a fortune. Let's just stay on schedule. Good thinking. We can grab a real dinner together and go out for a night on the town. Yeah. <laughs> Two young bachelors on the prowl. Say, where do you youngsters go these days? <laughs> Not 
have made the big splash in Hollywood or even made the budget back for that matter. But hey, in the end, I think it was still worth making just for those diehard fans that really love it. I attended a lot of sci-fi and movie cons, and to this day, I still see fans showing up dressed as aliens and apes and dinosaurs. <laughs> Does a man proud? Now, granted, their costumes aren't exactly 100% faithful to the film, and it seems that no one ever remembers them by the right name. But still, knowing that we still have fans like this promoting the film decades later, it puts a tear in this old director's eye. I get all emotional. Okay. on lens flare. I tell you, some days it felt like he was trying to be the director. Honestly, you could see dust on the lens, so I'd just go and wipe it off myself. He would get so upset about it too. Like my fingers aren't clean enough to wipe the lens. Touch the lens, oh, whatever.